I'm going to show you how to make awesome reflections quickly and easily inside After Effects. Let's begin. Now let's start in this comp with a dark purple solid that's going to be our background. And let's quickly make a nice pool with some gradients that's going to look cool with our reflections. So let's grab our rectangle tool up here and draw a rectangle for our pool. Now we want this to be a gradient. So let's choose fill over here and choose linear gradient and click OK. Or you could always hold Alt on your keyboard and click this square and cycle through all of our fill options. And now let's click on this box to fine tune our gradient. Now these are the colors I used last time, but here you can make any changes to the colors to create something custom for your animation. But our gradient is going the wrong way and the scale isn't right. So what we need to do is select our arrow tool or our selection tool here on the top left. And you'll see when we do that, these two dots and this connecting line appears. And this is gonna be the start and end of our gradient. So all we need to do is select either one of these, push the end to the bottom and click and drag the start to the very top. There, and if you can't see these handles, do make sure the arrow tool is selected. And let's rename this layer to pool because we always label our layers. And now let's add another subtle gradient to the background using another technique. So let's select our background layer and duplicate it with Control plus D, go into our effects menu up here and choose the effect fill. By default that's red, so let's select the eyedropper and pick something from the middle of our gradient. And then I'm gonna select our pen tool over here and just start drawing a mask. I'm doing this really roughly, I don't need to be super precise, I just really want to cover these bottom two corners. And now to blend that into our background, we can press F on our keyboard to bring up the mask feather, and then drag this up as much as we need. I think 600 is pretty good there. And that's another really handy way to create gradients that I use all the time. And now it's time to reflect. Let's select our type tool and add some text. And now let's select that text layer and pre-comp it with Control shift c and Let's call that pre-comp object, and let's dive into that pre-comp. And the first thing we can do is drag this reflection all the way down below the edge of this composition. Keyframe its position, and then a few seconds later, drag it up so it's just above the edge. Let's easy ease those with F9, and then head into the graph editor and make some quick adjustments on the speed graph by dragging these handles. So now it moves quickly at the start and then eases into this position. And you can add any animation you want into this comp. Now back in our main comp, let's line up our text pre-comp with where we want it to sit on the surface. I think somewhere just below the horizon is gonna look pretty good. Now let's duplicate this layer with Control D, go up to layer, transform and flip vertical. Now you won't see it because it's off the edge of our comp, but if we drag that down, we can see that it is now flipped and let's line that up with the bottom of our text. And now we get this animation and let's rename this comp object reflection. So we can tell them apart and I'm gonna color that one different color as well. Now we want our reflection to fade away at the bottom here. So with our reflection comp selected, let's choose our rectangle tool and then draw a mask, which just selects the very top of that reflection. And now we can press F on our keyboard to bring up the feather options and then feather that out. We might need to select that mask and drag it a bit further down as well. And then adjust the feathering to our liking, depending on how reflective we want this surface. We're getting close now. Next, let's add some ripples. If you want a very stylized ripple, you could add the effect wave warp, change the direction to zero degrees, and then adjust the wave width and height to your liking and lower the wave speed as well. And that creates a sine wave, which is very precise and very geometric. To create more realistic random ripples, let's delete that wave warp effect and add a turbulent displace. Change the displacement from turbulent to horizontal displacement. Let's set the amount up to 500 and the size way down to three. There we are. And of course, adjust if you want bigger ripples. So this is currently static. So we need to animate some movement into those ripples. I like to animate the evolution and the offset. So let's go to the beginning of our comp, click the stopwatch on evolution to set a keyframe. And then at the very end of our comp, let's change it to one full rotation. Now we get some ripple movement in there, but it kind of looks a bit like it's just smearing around. So now let's animate the offset. If we click on this crosshair next to offset turbulence here, and place that anywhere on our comp, we get this little circle. And if we move this circle around, it moves all the distortion around. We can set it anywhere for now. Let's go right under this E here. And at the very start of our comp, let's keyframe that offset by clicking the stopwatch up here. And at the very end, let's just drag this down a little bit. Let's see how that looks. There, that's not bad. Let's drag it down a bit more. There we are, we have the ripples moving and the distortion moving towards us a bit as well. Now this is only distorting left to right. So to get a bit of vertical distortion as well, we can duplicate this effect up here by pressing Control plus D and on our top displacement effect, we can change displacement to vertical displacement and then go and change the settings. Let's change the amount really low down to maybe 25 and maybe the size up to about 20. Now that's really subtle, but there's just a tiny bit of vertical displacement going on there as well. 
Now, depending on what your reflective surface is, you might want to grab your reflection comp, nudge it down with your arrow keys to create a bit of a line in between them. This is an effect you might get on a mirror or a reflective surface with some thickness. And now that this is all set up, we can go into this comp, change our text and add anything we want. And now we've added a larger object to that pre-comp, we might want to go in, select our mask and adjust our feathering so we get a bit more of a reflection showing through at the bottom. And you can also play around with some blending modes for your reflection as well. Maybe screen works really well for what you're using, but try different ones and see which works for you. Now, if you want your reflection to be limited to a specific area like this pond here, all we need to do is take this pond layer, this pre-comp I have here, duplicate it, put it on top of our object reflection, and then change the reflections track mat to alpha mat. And we get the desired effect and no one needs to get sent to the ranch. I made a short playlist of some related videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. I'll see you in the next video and please consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week.